Okay, let's take a moment to step away from mixing and what can feel slightly monotonous after a while and begin adding some creative elements into the song. In this section, we will attempt to add individual character. I want to begin adding some life into some of these tracks and a good place to begin is back where we started, with the drums. I noticed quite early on that the entry into the chorus is lacking punch and I want there to be some oomph behind it. Let's solo the drums and have a listen. As you can notice, the snare hit at the start is nowhere near as punchy as the snare hits that follow, and we want to bring that life to the start. So we are going to add something fairly straightforward, and that is an extra snare hit at the very beginning of the chorus. Although the chorus beat has a very nice snare hit, because of its added reverb, it does somehow lose some of its drive, and we will bring this back in by pinching a snare hit from beat 1. So we will zoom in on our beat 1, at the start of the chorus and just slice a snare hit from measure 44. We will then copy and paste or copy and drag the snare hit over to measure 42 and drag out the beginning of the hit so not to lose any crack at the start of the snare. And we will have a listen. Our next endeavour will be to add in a bass drop at the same moment, the start of the chorus. Now a bass drop is a method most commonly used in dubstep and metalcore, a subgenre in heavy metal. Both use this method, but both can use different methods to achieve the result, and there are more than one way to apply this technique, and some sound different than others. But we will add a bass drop more commonly used in metalcore. This method requires a very low bass sound to be placed usually at the start of a breakdown. A breakdown usually refers to an area of a song that goes into half time, or half the speed from the previous section. And when the bass drop is sounded, it lowers the level slightly of everything else, a technique also known as ducking or side chaining. The ducking effect is best noticed on the radio. When you hear a DJ speak over the music, the level of the music is reduced, and when they stop speaking, the level of music is raised again. The mechanics behind the ducking effect is taking the level of one track and using it to determine how much reduction will be applied to another using a compressor. So first off what we need are some bass samples. For this we will use an 808 and a 909 drum sample which we will get from Session Drummer. Let's make sure our cursor is over measure 42 and go over to the synth rack inside the browser and add in Session Drummer. Ok, there's no need to program in an entire drum kit, so we will just right click on the bass drum and click Load Instrument. Go to the bass drums and look for a good 808 kick. We will load up the 808 kick dark. Next we need to add this sound into our song, so for this we simply open up a step sequencer and place a sample at the start. We also want to add a 909 kick, so we will open up another session drummer. Right click the bass drum, load instruments, bass drums, and load up the 909 kick long sample. And repeat the last process. Now that we have both kicks loaded, we want to make them appear more bassy, so we will go into each of our kick samples and down tune the drum to minus 5.
To make them even more bassy, we will add some EQ to both tracks. So inside the Atowick Kick Pro channel, we will roll off some high end with a low pass filter at around 2k. And make a bass boost in our low band of around 60Hz and boost around 10dB. We will repeat this process for our 909 kick. We will also roll off around minus 4dB in volume on both kicks to allow them some room. We will now place them both in their own folder, solo them and have a listen. And again, unsoloed. There is one more important process to apply, and that is the side chaining that will give us the drop effect we are after. Now we want the drop to lower the volume of the synths as it comes in, so this is where our synth bus comes in. We will go over to our synth bus and make sure we have the PC4K S type bus compressor inside the channel. And let's dial in some settings. We need this to really compress the sound, so we will dial in a threshold of around minus 35 dB. And have an attack of around 2. And a release time as quickly as it allows us, because we don't want the effect to last that long. So we will pull back the release all the way to 0.1. Lastly, we want to turn on our sidechain button and reduce the sidechain high pass frequency to around 60 Hz. We now need to place a send from each of our bass drops to the compressor on the synth bus. And lastly, for an added punch, we will insert the concrete limiter onto the 808 kick and really pull the threshold down to draw out the drop, around minus 14. Set a ceiling level of minus 6 or so to stop any clipping. And turn on the bass switch. Let's hear what this sounds like inside the mix. Side chaining has many uses and can be used to create some pretty unique sounds. Another effect that also uses a side chaining technique involves using a gate. With this, you can take a rhythm from one sound and use it to create a totally unique rhythm on a different track. Let's try this now so you can better understand what it does. What we are going to do is use the Zeta 3's rhythm and duplicate it onto the chorus Zeta. First, we need to go over to our chorus Zeta and insert the PC4K expander gate onto the Pro channel. Then on the Zeta 3, we need to insert a send to the expander gate on the chorus Zeta. Now let's go back to the chorus Zeta and dial in some settings. We will set a threshold to around minus 2.20 A range of 23.60 dB and a release time of 0.12 We are using these settings because they are the best to make the effect as prominent as possible on this particular occasion. 
different settings would need to be explored to obtain a similar effect but on different tracks. Let's turn on the gate button and switch the side chain and fast attack buttons on too. And let's now turn the gate off, play the two tracks together, and then I'll switch the gate back on and do a quick A B test. Let's move on now and look at EQing the vocals.